Aside from color and what they really looked like, one of the biggest questions about Life of the Past and its superstars, the dinosaurs, is how smelly they were. I mean, what the hell did they sound like? Plenty of blabbering has been made of this question with various levels of accuracy or speculation. Some special fossils have provided some insight, but nothing super concrete and nothing that satisfies every dinosaur enthusiast. <laughs> but let's be honest, is there a way to satisfy those nerds anyway? A brand new study on the fossils of a well-known armored dinosaur posit that the shapes of the bones in its throat might provide more insight into what these beasts may have sounded like than ever before. The hyolaryngeal apparatus, which is a hyper-complex word that covers both the tongue and the voice box, is a key trait in the evolution of tetrapod animals, tetrapod being all us four-leggers. The evolution of this complex trait is strongly associated with feeding, respiration, and vocalization. It's kind of important. We do, in fact, need our tongues for talking, singing, and communicating, as well as eating. We also have to have a voice box connected to all these things to help us make those sounds. The tongue is also a part of breathing in a lot of animals. The larynx or what normies call the voice box, is an organ in the top of the neck involved with breathing and producing sound with the use of air, muscles, and cartilage. This organ is an entrance to the tracheal passage and is of course involved with vocalization in all animals that have one, which should be most of them last time I checked. Among modern archosaurs, so just birds and crocs really, the hyolaryngeal apparatus, remember that is the larynx or voice box and the tongue, differs both anatomically and functionally. Birds and crocs have different things going on with their noisemakers, despite being each other's closest living relatives. Truth is, despite this fact, they are separated by tens or hundreds of millions of years of evolution. Extinction is a funny thing and fickle mistress like that. In the crocs, the larynx produces sound and is the source for their vocalizations. These scaly puppers make all sorts of sounds, but none of the kind of things we associate with birds all that much. Hisses, growls, moans, and roars. Birds, on the other hand, have a larynx, but an entirely new organ as well, the syrinx. In these living dinosaurs, the syrinx takes on the role of a gnawing beatbox near the ass end of the trachea, or windpipe, and helps to increase the efficiency of vocalizations. The bird larynx functions as part of the vocal tract, helping to change the sounds it makes, but it does not make sounds by itself. The hyoid bones, lingual bones, or tongue bones are, as its common names suggest, horseshoe-shaped bones situated in the front and middle of the neck between the chin and thyroid cartilage. Well, it is situated there in humans at least. Something tells me that despite some animals lacking chins entirely, it is probably still located in a similar general area. These funky bones are in the tongue and neck and are not connected to the rest of the skeleton. Instead, they are attached to the rest of the body with muscles and ligaments. These bones are especially important because they are an anchor for the tongue in the voice box as well as the epiglottis or anti-drowning, anti-choking flap and pharynx or the void behind the mouth and nasal cavity. Although these bones have been preserved in more than a few fossils, and although the evolution of these structures has been previously researched, no actual larynx or voice box has ever been found in extinct non-avian reptiles, so pretty much just dinosaurs, birds, and such, and the evolution of this organ in these groups is a huge unknown void. This is why a lot of scientists have hypothesized that some dinos made sounds more akin to crocs than to birds. And hence this meme.
The lack of a proper larynx appearing in any dinosaur fossils may be because the larynx is made entirely of cartilage in all tetrapod groups except for modern dinosaurs belonging to the Neonithae. Though cartilage can and has preserved, it has weathered the environment and has survived to become fossilized in a good healthy list of spectacular fossils. It still comparatively rarely does. I said there is no known larynx in dinosaur fossils, but there are hyoids. Only the ceratobranchials part of the hyoid apparatus is preserved in non-avian dinosaur fossils regularly, with the full hyoids being found in Carnotaurus, Microraptor, and Confuciusornis, where both the basihyal and ceratobranchial bones are found, and some ankylosaurs in which the entire thing, basihyal, ceratohyal, and ceratobranchials are found, Cychania and Pinacosaurus being those ankylosaurs. Specifically, the specimen of Pinacosaurus grangeri, known as IgM 13186, has the best preserved hyolaryngeal apparatus in any known non avian dinosaur specimen. This is the super special specimen that was used by paleontologists Junki Yoshida, Yoshisuga Kobayashi, and Mark Norell in a brand new study just published in the journal Nature. This specimen of the armored dinosaur Pinacosaurus was discovered in Uka, Tolgod, Mongolia, a few years before it was described back in 2015. It's a nearly complete skull and connected series of neck vertebrae, neck ribs, some armor, the left forearm, and of course the exceptionally preserved throat goat bones. These fossils were found in rock layers that date to the middle Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous. The burial of dinosaurs and other vertebrates at this locality was rapid and complete, resulting in well-preserved and articulated specimens. For the brand new study, this specimen was further prepared for observation and measurements. In order to better observe and describe the hyolaryngeal apparatus, the team decided that CT scanning was the way to go. So it was thrown into a CT scanner at the American Museum of Natural History, after which CT images were precisely and accurately Frankensteined back together from data that can be found on morphobank.org. What an oxymoron, you say? Once the whole shebang was complete and could be looked at, the team found that this Pinacosaurus preserved two laryngeal elements, called the cricoid and eritinoid, and one hyoid element, called the ceratobranchial. The researchers said that the hyoids are pretty much in the exact same position they were when the walking coffee table of a dinosaur was alive, because the whole thing is very symmetrical and the whole thing is still situated along the midline of the throat and the positioning of the arytenoid and cricoid bones. Here is the structure in its entirety. I won't really bother with as thorough a description as seen in the paper because even I wouldn't really know what that means exactly, but let's take a look at what the scientists said about its anatomy and what it means. The arytenoid bones are typically short in the throats of non-dino reptiles and are typically long in the actual dinosaurs, like Pinacosaurus and birds. Math shows that the arytenoid's length is positively correlated with mandible length. That essentially means that as the lower jaw increases in width, the arytenoid bone increases in length. However, the researchers also found that the math shows a distinction between the size of the arytenoid bones between animal groups which use their larynx for making sound, aka reptiles, versus groups that use the structure for modifying sounds, aka birds. Cricoids, on the other hand, are far wider in geckos, vocal turtles, birds, and Pinacosaurus, and a strong correlation was found between the width of the cricoid and the width of the jaw. Wider the jaw, wider the cricoid bone. I said before that no larynx has ever been found in a non-avian dinosaur, but they have been found in the fossils of other groups, specifically in avian dinosaurs. The oldest known fossil larynx was found in the 56 to 46 million year old Presbyornis from the Green River Formation of Wyoming. It turns out that some throat goat elements in the ankylosaurs from Mongolia that were previously thought to be parts of the hyoid apparatus are literally just bits of the larynx. This makes Pinacosaurus and Cychania the oldest examples of the larynx in Dinosauria.
Both of these armored dinosaurs share a hardening or ossification of the cricoid and arytenoid bones as seen in birds. The researchers think this indicates that the larynx is ossified in some non-avian dinosaurs in general. It is a possibility that the hardening of these structures opening them up to becoming fossilized is a trait that only appeared in the ankylosaur group and independently to birds. But there also remains the possibility that other fossils really are simply preserved in the wrong way for these structures to persevere becoming a fossil. As it stands, the larynx of Pinacosaurus is a lot more similar to the one in birds than to the one in crocs. The cricoid bones of Pinacosaurus were compared to all sorts of reptiles, avian and non-avian. It was found that these bones of Pinacosaurus were most similar to those of the most vocal reptiles, birds, geckos, and some noisy turtles. The bones are very much like those used to create strong vocalizations in birds. And considering that the lungs of non-avian dinosaurs were pretty much the same as those in birds, the researchers have found that there is a strong possibility that these armored dinosaurs may have had some complex communications. This may also mean that bird-like vocalizations evolved before birds did. So Dangerville, if you are watching this, you finally have one real example of what a real dinosaur may have sounded like outside of Parasaurolophus. Time to redo those videos, my friend. Ecosystems of the past would have been as noisy as they are today, but in completely different ways. Mark Witten's Thoughts Paleontologist, paleoartist, and friend of the show, Dr. Mark Witten posted his thoughts on this discovery and I figured it would be beneficial to the discussion to replicate them here. The research isn't particularly in-depth enough to attach a real sound to the larynx of Pinacosaurus, so unlike the Parasaurolophus tube experiment, we may not really know the exact sounds these possibly noisy pineapple war pigs made. The Yoshida et al. Pinacosaurus larynx paper is super exciting, reframing the conversation about dinosaur vocalization overnight, but it also presents one interpretation of these data without mentioning other models of dino vocal evolution. The big deal with Pinacosaurus is that the larynx appears more bird-like than croc-like. Because dinosaurs probably had bird-like lungs, it's reasonable to wonder if other aspects of avian vocal anatomy, for example, the syrinx, appeared deep within Dinosauria too. But there are other ways to interpret this. An important question is why the syrinx evolved at all when the larynx was already a perfectly good voice box. One possibility is that dinosaurs were super vocalizers, using two voice boxes. And another is that the dinosaur larynx was non-vocal, with the syrinx evolving later as a replacement to give dinosaurs their voice back. Both of those ideas are nicely summarized in this image from Kingsley et al. 2018. One important aside, voiceless does not mean silent. Non-vocal acoustics like hissing, snorting, booming, popping can be made without voice boxes, so we don't need to imagine noiseless dinosaur communities even in this model. Finding that the Pinacosaurus larynx is bird-like rejects the first hypothesis. Dinosaurs probably weren't double-voiced. But it doesn't rule out the second, where dinosaurs lacked a vocal larynx, but hadn't evolved a syrinx yet either. To disprove hypothesis 2, we need data on when the syrinx appeared. So far, this has been lacking. Mineralized syrinx tissues and the evidence of the clavicular air sac, a structure associated with the syrinx, are found in Cenozoic bird fossils, but they remain absent in virtually all Mesozoic dinosaurs. Vegavis, a crown group true bird, is the only Mesozoic animal known for certain to have a syrinx. Even with our mountains of dinosaurs with exceptional soft tissue preservation and CT scan data. Away from Vegavis, the pneumatized pectoral girdles and forelimbs associated with clavicular air sacs only occur consistently in ornithothoracines, the antiornithines and crown birds. So even our indirect evidence for Searing's evolution points to a very crownward origin. This issue, noted by several authors on this topic, isn't magicked away by this new data. Indeed, a case could be made that the current absence of evidence for dino syrinxes and Pinacosaurus's avian-style larynx makes the possibility of voiceless dinosaurs more likely. 
but you should also avoid the pitfall of assuming the evolution of avian vocal anatomy was a binary event. There surely had to be proto syrinxes, but we have no idea what they were like. Perhaps they were weakly mineralized and left no bony traces, so probably one take home from this paper is that we need to broaden and rethink our search for evidence of syrinx-like structures. Our attention, to date, has focused on theropods for obvious reasons, but what about any other dinosaurs? What even about pterosaurs? If we're using pneumatized pectoral girdles and forelimbs to predict syrinx evolution and are now thinking this was a deep dino or perhaps basal ornithodiron event, pterosaurs are suddenly very relevant. Even early pterosaurs have pneumatized shoulders and arms. This is all speculation and arm waving. If we stick with what we know for sure, we're still some way off understanding how and if dinosaurs vocalized. The new paper adds critically important data to our discussion, but it's a piece in a jigsaw that is still far from complete. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bear, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.